Hey y'all, it's Holistic Beauty RN. I'm a registered nurse here to give you useful information based on the research. So enjoy. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake. Welcome to my channel, Holistic Beauty RN. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're an OG, oldie but a goodie, welcome back. So first and foremost, you guys, I just want to start off by thank you guys so much. Because of you, my rice water videos have gained so many views. And to date, those are my highest viewed videos on my channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you guys haven't already checked that out, check out my rice water video series. It's a playlist that has all my rice water videos, including my overnight rice water video, which was my most popular, my two week rice water update, and then five ways or five things you should know before using rice water. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll go ahead and make it easy for you. Click the link above and check that out. But of course, after you watch this video, right? Cause you want to watch this video first, then go to that. So yeah. Stay tuned. Sit down and stay, stay put. <laughs> but I wanted to come and bring you guys another rice water video um, because I think it's just so important to know certain things about it that I, I feel is not really known about rice water. So I figured why not throw some knowledge, spit some knowledge out there to y'all about something that I enjoy doing and that is using rice water because I use it for my own hair. So, um, like I said, if you haven't seen those videos progressing my updates and how I used it, please check those out. So, in this video, if you haven't gathered already from the title below, this is going to be about who should use rice water. So, rice water is one of the latest hair trends um, that supposedly gives, if you use it, fermented rice water, that is. Um, if you use fermented rice water, it supposedly gives you these amazing results as far as uh, rapid hair growth and then the growth of long, thick, beautiful hair, right? So, who doesn't want that? I mean, shoot, I know I do. And I know y'all do. So, um, yeah, just because this rice water is out there doesn't mean everybody should use it or even if that it doesn't mean everybody should use it in the same way as other people so i'm here to spit some knowledge to y'all today about who should use rice water and maybe who should take a different approach to using it um, if you still feel that you want to use it. first and foremost with rice water well let's before we get into that i want to talk about hair porosity so this was in one of my other videos five things you should know about rice water or before you use rice water so if you haven't checked that out go ahead and check that out but i'm going to go a little bit more in detail in this video than i did in the last so hair porosity you have three types you have your low your medium aka normal and then your high porosity so what is hair porosity you may ask right so hair porosity is the ability of the hair to retain moisture or the hair to become moisturized. So let's start off with low porosity, which is my hair type, by the way. Low porosity hair, um, it's when the strand of hair, those little cuticles on the strand of hair. So you have this one little strand of hair and then you got these little cuticles that are just on the outside edge of that hair strand, right? So in low porosity, those cuticles are tightly closed. So when something tightly closed, you ain't gaining entry. You ain't coming in. Meaning that moisture, it's not getting in that hair strand. It's going to be harder for that hair strand to absorb moisture. It's not to say that it's not possible, but it does take a lot more work and effort for it to do so. With medium or normal porosity hair, those cuticles are slightly open. So that means that moisture can gradually come in when needed with no problem. And then it gradually comes out. Those hair follicles are slightly open, so it allows for an even distribution of moisture to come in 
and it allows for it to gradually it, it it's able to retain and hold on to that moisture um, even longer um, so that's the ideal hair type if you have to ask which of the three is the best it would be the normal aka medium porosity and then last but not least you have your high porosity so with high porosity them cuticles are flat open they like hello There ain't no shame in that game. They flying open, which means moisture can rapidly be taken in, which some may think, well, that's the whole idea. You want that moisture in. That's a good thing, right? Uh, yes. But the flip side to that is, it could also be rapidly lost. So, uh, you gonna be moisturized quick, but then dry even quicker. That's just as soon as you got moisturized, you dry again. <laughs> so it's not like that, really. But the whole idea is that you retain, you regain that moisture quick, but then you also lose it even quicker. So those are your three hair porosity types. So you now may be asking, so what all that got to do with rice water? Why should I care? Well, let's get into detail about what rice water is. So the whole idea of why rice water works so well is because of its nutritional content, what it has in that rice, in that water ultimately that you're putting in your hair. So rice water contains a whole slew of vitamins and minerals. So it's got a lot of amino acids, also known as proteins. So proteins help to strengthen that hair strand. So the good thing about that, most importantly, how it is, how it relates to the hair is, protein strengthens that hair strand. So when your hair strand is strong, that means it's less prone to breakage. So if your hair ain't breaking, you able to grow out that hair longer because it's less of it breaking. So that's good, that's what we want. We want strong hair strands so that we can, re we can retain that growth because on average, hair grows about half an inch a month or six inches in a year. That's pretty good, right? But you want to see that growth. So if you want to see that growth, that means you got to break. Your hair needs to not break. It needs to be more healthy and retain that growth. So the good thing with protein is it helps to strengthen the hair to counteract that breakage. So in addition to that, it's loaded with other vitamins. Vitamin B, which helps to grow the hair as well. Vitamin E, which helps to strengthen and promote growth. So it's got all these vitamins and minerals, which is why, no wonder, it's so good for the hair. However, protein, too much of it can cause what's called protein overload. So just as it sounds, protein overload is too much protein. You're overloading the hair with too much protein. So why does this matter? Does this when matter it when it comes to hair porosity? Well, for instance, with low hair porosity, as I've just explained, those cuticles are tightly closed, right? So it's already harder for that low porosity hair to retain moisture, right? Or to become moisturized. So when you have this protein, AKA rice water on the hair, which rice water helps to coat the hair strand and shield it to strengthen it and prevent it from breaking. So now you got tightly closed cuticles on your low porosity hair. In addition to this rice water protein guarding the hair strand so now that's like a double barrier preventing moisture from coming in so you see the connection right you see where i'm going here right that's why it's even harder for somebody with low porosity hair to retain moisture because now you've got their own cuticles preventing moisturized hair and then you've got this rice water coating the hair preventing moisture from getting in so too much of it can actually just lead to breakage because now you're not able to get any moisture into that hair, which moisturized hair is healthy hair and healthy hair is growing hair. It's hair that grows, right? And then also I wanna talk about, cause you may ask, well, how do I know what my hair porosity is? You talking about low, medium, high? How the heck do I know which one is mine? It's okay, boo boo, I got you. I got you, sit back, relax. I got you. So this is how you're gonna check your porosity, right? It's called a strand test. Some of y'all probably heard of that. And if not, it's okay. I'm about to educate y'all real quick. So the strand test is very simple, I promise you. Just take a cup of water, don't matter how much, just a regular old cup of water with some warm water. Ain't gotta be too hot, not too cold. Lukewarm is fine. Get your water, get you a strand of hair. You ain't gotta pluck it out your scalp at this moment. It could be hair from your comb, your brush, whatever. Just make sure it's one strand of hair and place it in that water. Leave it alone, just place it in the water. Don't push it down or nothing, just drop it in the water. Wait about five minutes or so, come back to that water. 
if that strand, if that strand, and I'm gonna link some pictures um, to follow so you guys can see what that looks like. If that strand remains sitting on top of the water as it initially was, that means you have low porosity hair. If it's kind of floating in the middle of the water, then you have medium or normal porosity hair. And if that strand has sank all the way to the bottom of the water, then you, my friends, have high porosity hair. So see how simple that was to test it? So go ahead, try it out, and leave in the comments box below how that worked out for you. What was your results for your strand test? I'm curious to know how many how many people can I relate to with low porosity hair like me? Hands up if you got low porosity hair like me. So that's the whole idea with that. So you may be wondering, okay, well, if that's the case, should somebody with low porosity hair be using rice water at all? The answer to that is, it all depends on you as a person. If you're one of those people that's willing to take that risk, or not even that, if you're one of those people that has enough discipline to know somebody like you with low porosity hair should not be using rice water, definitely not every day. Don't use it every day, please. If you have enough discipline to know you should not use rice water every day and you need to rinse it out in a given amount of time, which is about 30 minutes to an hour. If you're one of those people that know these are the strict things that I need to follow in order to benefit the most from this rice water, then I would say yes, it's okay to use it. Because like I said, for me, somebody like me with low porosity hair, I use rice water probably twice a month. So I spread it out to about once every two weeks so roughly that's about two times a month. My hair is not shedding, breaking off. It's not excessively dry or in it unable to hold or retain moisture because I'm using it the right way. I'm spreading out the amount of times that I'm using it. I'm making sure that when I apply it in my hair that I'm leaving it on for at least 30 minutes to an hour and then I'm washing it off making sure I get all that rice water off and then I'm following up with the deep conditioning treatment because you want to throw back that moisture. You definitely want to give that moisture back to your hair once you've done this protein treatment, AKA rice water, which can be drying initially to the hair. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure that you're putting moisture back into that hair. So I've been doing all of this stuff and I've been having great results as a result because I'm doing it and using it the right way. So remember, if you have, if you're a person with low porosity hair, it's okay to use rice water, but with ev like with everything else, especially for you being more vulnerable, using it in moderation is best. Um, so just remember those things. Also rice water may not be best for somebody with high porosity hair because again, them cuticles are open. So as quick as you're absorbing that moisture, you're losing it as well. So with rice water, like I said, it's going to coat the hair strand, which strengthens the hair. However, it also can be drying to the hair. So you wanna make sure that you're following up with all the moisture that you can possibly do to give back into that hair strand because too much rice water, like I said, can lead to uh, protein overload, which is an imbalance between moisture and the protein, which can cause hair breakage, right? So you wanna ensure that you're giving the moisture back into the hair strands to retain that moisture because moisturized hair is growing hair. Moisturized hair is hair that grows. Keep that in mind. So with that, I hope you guys have learned from this video. I hope you guys have a better understanding of what porosity is when it comes to hair. I hope that you guys now have a better understanding of how to properly use rice water depending on your hair porosity. You will begin to see those benefits. So um, please stay tuned. I plan to do a follow-up video to this because like I said, I'm just really about giving you the knowledge when it comes to using something like rice water because I feel that things you need to know in order to reap the most benefit from it. So the next thing I will be talking about in this rice water video series will be how to properly ferment your rice water because fermentation helps to activate that protein and those nutritional benefits in the rice water, which obviously will allow for the most benefit and effectiveness in your hair journey. So stay tuned because that will be my next video about how to properly ferment 
your rice water for hair use. Don't forget to check the description box below because I link all my information as far as the sources of the research that I have gathered to present to you this information today. All of that information is in my description box below. I hope you all enjoy that video. Stay tuned for part two where I'll show you and explain how to properly ferment your rice water. Bye -bye. Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.